what I'm thinking about is um, a conversation that I heard recently, Angela Davis discussing how we can approach the, the violence of this moment. And she offered this reminder, radical Black feminist critical methodologies teach us to always ask the other question um, so that we are always aware of and connecting through the complexities of a given issue. I would like to open this by asking you what 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 what's not being talked about? What how might we approach this moment differently? As as you were reading that quote from Angela Davis, the first thing that came to me is love. I am waking up from a night for the first time of dreams where I have been in the West Bank intervening between situations between soldiers and Palestinians. When I was screaming, talking, intervening holding back the soldiers, when I look in their eyes, I love them because I know them. And it's it's very it's a very hard love to maintain right now. And when I find the love, I also find where that love became toxic. Like love is endless, it's infinite, and, and yet our shapes are allowing us or, or giving us the, 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 the code switching, the, the, the underwater maps to find love for, for people that most of the world is hating. The kinds of loving and the love relationships that are happening within modernity are the relationships that prohibit us from noticing how interrelated we are. Violence cannot be reduced to isolated human actions. The poison is not in the pot. The poison is the pot. So how do we stop this incredible suffering? How do we help and support and build solidarity, especially, um, as Maytal beautifully says, not excluding our siblings in Israel, but also especially for the people in Palestine. One state solution, two state solution. What if the state is the poison? What if it has constructed us in ways that does not pay homage and does not honor the memory of loss? How many times will I, you know, wear the avatar of, of the Israeli soldier that I was 20 something years ago to tell that story so that I can be qualified to talk about this so that someone will listen to me. Like the solidarity feels like clear that, that being a part of a movement feels clear in, in us trying to imagine otherwise. I know that we can't right arrive there. That's why we're trying to imagine otherwise. But how do we know that this taking up of this air it is not just just putting the, the power in the power, more power. You're either for this or for this. You're either for that or against that. It's a tribalism that repeats itself and echoes the liberal humanist inadequacies of this moment. I feel this is a time to listen. I think it's a time not just to listen to other human beings, including the ones that are in the deep throes of suffering. I think it's a time to listen to the world around us. The idea that we have found a perch that we can land on permanently and claim to be ours using the language of capitalist extractivist relations, that's what's in crisis. That's what's in crisis. This is more than a game of sides or a game of identity. This is a game of a sensorium, a larger force, a tehomic force, a primordial force that is keeping us tethered in its morality, incarcerating us in repeatability. We might achieve a ceasefire. We might even achieve a two nation state uh, solution but we would only have postponed the violence to other aspects of the body. Just in the same way, I believe fervently that the Israeli homecoming was just a postponement of the Holocaust tragedies and a regurgitation of those traumas. My question is more how you are dealing and being sustained and nurtured and nourished as you take these courageous steps you know courage is an interesting word because courage to me is associated with this realm of um hero 
So I think courage to me is an inevitability. I feel like my heart has been my my teacher and that heart loves deep. <laughs> and, and from that deep love, I must speak the truth. Mm -hmm. and and the truth is is what is being i think associated with courage i am actually using my own blood and scars and and fragments and memories and and the taste of my own shit to to offer us a way to love each other mm -hmm. to see each other mm -hmm. um and and it must be from a liberated heart and and the Israeli identity and the Israeli state will never let us get there. You know, the ceasefire should be us seizing from ourselves. Should be like us seizing from these borders, us seizing from these identities. Throughout my childhood, there was like this trauma that like, if I don't become this hero, I'm going to mm -hmm. be thrown into the sea with everyone else. Like, mm -hmm. I want to invite everyone in Israel. Let's just swim in there. You know, that biggest fear that we hold, what happens if we just literally as, as a people just let's go in? Like, how do we like seize to this place where we are able to, to find love? Keep speaking that truth from, from the places that we are able to heal and encourage each other to heal more. I also have so much more healing to do. This shape, this indoctrination, this brainwash, my entire life will be spent undoing it. That's how deep it goes. I keep coming back to Rafat El Arir, um, the poet in Palestine that was murdered. If I must die, you must live. What does it mean to live? It says, I have struggled hard with being asked to call my U.S. representative to ask for a ceasefire. This convo makes me wonder what your thoughts are about if investing energy in these calls and emails is one way that we are reinforcing the ills of the world. Of course, we don't trust the government. Of course, we know that those systems and those governments are not going to exist in the future. But from the place of within them, we still might, we still need to fight for, for the people that can. To get the U.S. to stop funding Israel is one way we, we put a clog in the system. But I think what I want to invite everyone is to care deeper. I was fascinated with the pressure cooker. So I asked my, my mother, why, why the letting out of the pressure? And she said, well, if it doesn't let it out, it would explode. I was reminded about this when someone compared ceasefires to the letting out of the pressure cooker. Ceasefires are constitutionally connected to troubling continuity. We are all effectively in differentiatedly enlisted in what solidarity might yet become in this moment. Trickster God from the Yoruba Pantheon that traveled with black bodies across the Atlantic. And you reminded me of that a while ago when you said, I want to take my people into the waters. The story is about the Igbo people walking into the waters, waters rather than give their bodies to the plantation. They walked into the waters. It was a stranger kind of solidarity. It was an act of radical accompaniment. It wasn't a, an act of guarantees or safety. It was a different kind of sidling the logic of containment. Then maybe there are other things to do on the side. And this side is not a useless side. It is a beautiful and rapturous side. Maybe we do that by grieving together. Maybe lamentation is a new form of activism. Maybe the cosmos is teenage and awkward and it doesn't exactly know how to deal with this and we're in the awkwardness of it together. But maybe the thing to do is to experiment with the edges of this awkwardness. Whatever it is, it will take us to edges of what we know. But whatever the case may be, may our road be rough and may the roughness of this time be a sanctuary to us. Thank you. Thank you, Taisha. Thank you, Maytel. Thank you so much.